Okay, so this is the question, uh, the question's titled Pi on Decay. Uh, by the way, this is one of the questions that I've written uh, for this class because uh, frankly, in my opinion, OpenStax University Physics, they don't ask interesting relativistic dynamics questions. So uh, for this said, what I've done is about half of the questions I've written from more realistic situations that are uh, more interesting and takes a better understanding of special relativistic dynamics to answer. So this is one of those questions and uh, uh, let me work through it. It's, a, um, it's a, a good example of a typical kind of two particle decay that's often seen in particle physics. Or you know, even when particles decay into more than two, you can kind of group them as two and that's a kind of calculation that's often done in particle physics. So. I think it's worth doing now so that you are seeing this example uh, for later on, you know, those of you who might be going into particle physics. So a charged pion decays into a muon and a muon antineutrino. That's this. This is a muon. This is a muon antineutrino. You know, about uh, this much time in a process. Uh, yeah, that. So yeah, I think that's clear enough. Answer below questions, assuming that pion is at rest in the lab. Uh, before it decays. Okay, that makes things a little bit easier. So um, we have a neutral, not neutral, sorry, charged pion that's at rest. Uh, so its speed is zero. And um, after some length of time, it'll decay. One of the particles, muon, will go one way. And the other particle, muon neutrino or a neutrino, will go the other way. And I think, yeah, let me do um, parts A and B in order. Because part A is a special case of part B, um, it might be more efficient to do part B and then just plug in the values for part A. But um, uh, part B is significantly harder. So, so let me do part A first, which is slightly easier, and then I will make the necessary changes that's needed for part B. So um, th this is what I'm getting at. So in part A, it says the muon neutrino has a very small mass, which could possibly be zero. Um, <laughs> this is a detail of particle physics. So in part A, what it's asking you to do, calculate the energy of the, and momentum of the muon and the antineutrino here. This is the special case. And that makes some things a little bit easier if the muon antineutrino is massless. So that actually tells me this speed right away. Speed of the neutrino must be C, speed of light. Speed of light is the, light at, uh, the speed at which um, any particle that's massless will travel. At. So. So it's asking, so it's giving you these parameters that I'll eventually plug in, in uh, rest energy or the energy that's uh, associated with the mass of the pion is that, rest energy of the muon is that. So I need to first work out an um, algebraic expression. And uh, what you are leaning on as you are working through these dynamics questions is the conservation law, conservation of, um, I guess, conservation of energy and momentum. And one of the features that I hope you will start to notice as you work through special relativistic dynamics is that, um, so in class, in the uh, pre-special relativity, we are used to treating energy and momentum separately. In fact, there are situations where the mechanical energy is conserved and momentum is not, vice versa. In almost all the special relativistic uh, relativity interactions, you'll find that energy and momentum are conserved together as a single quantity. There's a, there's a, a what's called energy dash momentum four vector. So just like you can combine time and space coordinates in, into space time four vector, you can form a similar kind of four vector with the energy and momentum. It you know looks like this. It, uh, the time coordinate is energy uh, divided by C, and the, the three spatial coordinate is the, the momentum, the vector quantity. And um, 
So uh, when we say conservation of energy and momentum uh, in a more kind of relativistic uh, oriented way of saying it would be conservation of energy momentum for vector. So what we want to say is, okay, so before decay, there was a, a four vector representation of that pion at rest. And this interaction conserves energy momentum for vector so that uh, energy momentum for vector should basically remain the same. Uh, let me write it out. So, um, so before the decay, what trade was, okay, let's just write out the energy momentum for vector for the pion. Uh, for the, the, for the pion, uh, so we had the energy of the pion, which um, in this case, it's just the rest energy. Um, so mass of the pion, C squared divided by C, so just times C. And the momentum of the pion was zero. So that's a before picture. And we want to say that that before picture is equal to what we are going to get after. Now the specific expression will look different because we are going to write out the energy and momentum of the muon and the energy and momentum of the neutrino. Uh, but when they've all been added up together, it's going to be same as the left-hand side. So that's what conservation law says. So after, let me write out the the expression for muon. So I have to be so uh, I have to remember these formulas. The total energy of any relativistic thing is gamma mc squared, and the momentum of that relativistic thing is gamma mv. So let me write it out for muon first. So for muon, its total energy will be the gamma factor that's associated with the speed of the muon <laughs> times mc uh, squared divided by c, so no squared here. Um, and the uh, momentum of the muon, let's say muon is going in the positive uh, direction. Uh, so it'll be plus uh, gamma of the uh, muon times and and I do recognize that gamma and V uh, or you know V is actually beta C um, they represent one single degree of freedom uh, so uh, eventually I'm going to want to rewrite either gamma or beta in terms of the other thing but for the time being let me just write in beta so beta mu times C so this is for muon. Uh, this is muon traveling in the positive x direction with the dead amount of energy, dead amount of momentum. That added to the energy momentum for vector for the neutrino should add up to the left hand side. Now uh, let's uh, so at this point uh, let's enter in the assumption that the neutrino is massless, and that um, requires a degree of caution because for massless particles, beta is equal to one and gamma goes to infinity. <laughs> so you don't um, really want to deal with the gamma and beta whenever a particle is massless. Um, what you instead want to deal with is the energy momentum relationship that you have seen. The energy squared is equal to mc squared squared plus pc squared because notice how in this expression you don't have gammas and betas anymore this expression is the one that remains valid even when the mass is equal to zero so oh so all that says is ah oh, so my e squared is equal to pc squared or absolute value take the square root e is equal to momentum times c so um let me choose to parameterize all this. Uh, let's do it with the, the energy of the neutrino. I think that will make best sense I think, in my head. So energy of the neutrino divided by C. I don't have any gammas to deal with because you know gamma is infinity and C is equal to one. Um, and for the momentum, instead of, it, so in this case, the uh, energy and momentum are kind of two separate parameters. Uh, with the neutrino moving at speed of light, um, uh, momentum will be, in fact, uh, p since uh, p is equal to the 
total energy divided by C. Oh, it will be basically the same thing. Now, the thing I have to be careful was um, I said muon to be moving in positive direction. So for them to be, for the total momentum to add up to zero, neutrino must be moving in the negative direction in over C. That's what this is showing. So, so yeah, that's uh, my expressions. Um, let's see where I'm at with this. Uh, let me just uh, make a little bit of a space here. Um, I want to, so, you know, a vector equation like this, this, uh, what well, looks like one equation, it actually stands for two non-trivial equations that says the energy component is equal to the sum of energy component, one equation, that this momentum component is equal to this momentum component, two equations. So I have two equations and uh, how many unknowns do I have? So I don't know gamma. I technically don't know beta, but I can reduce it in terms of gamma. And I don't know the energy of the neutrino. Uh, I think that's it. I have two equations, two unknowns. I should be able to solve it. Uh, so let me do that. I think the, uh, so I'm gonna write out my equations one and two. And the main thing I'll take care is to, um, and this is something that I've really learned after a long time of doing special relativistic dynamics. A lot of the calculations you do in special relativity, they are easier when expressed in terms of gamma. Even though we have a better intuition for beta than gamma, so what I'm going to is I'm going to eliminate this in favor of gamma. So um, from solving this gamma is equal to one over square root of one minus beta squared. Solving that for beta, I have a beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. So I'm going to plug this in here and you will see um, uh, quite a bit of simplification that occurs when I do that. So my equation one is equal to um, the, the rest energy of the pion uh, ish <laughs> divided by C uh, is equal to sum of these two uh, gamma of the muon times and mass of the muon. Uh, let me not forget that times C plus the energy of the neutrino in the decay divided by C. Okay, um, let me write down the equation two while making this substitution. Zero is equal to, and making this substitution, I have, uh, let me do it this way, I'm gonna write out M mu C up front, and what I have is this gamma mu times square root of one minus one over gamma mu squared. And there's a great deal of simplification that happens when you uh, imagine absorbing this gamma into the square root, you know. Gamma is equal to gamma squared, square rooted. So this gamma squared multiplies to one, gives me gamma squared, multiplies to one over gamma squared, gives me one. So um, this whole combined expression is a square root of gamma squared minus one. It's a, a lot simpler than um, what other things it could be. I took care of that. Minus the, uh, back, back to my original color, uh, minus the energy of the neutrino divided by C, that's the momentum of the neutrino. So, okay, uh, I need a plan. Um, I got two unknowns, um, I guess both in places. Um, yeah, let me do this by hand. Um, and I'll do part B using Sage Math because uh, <laughs> it's a good illustration of uh, usefulness of the computer algebra system. I think this is a simple enough to do by hand, so let me just do it by hand. So um, just staring at it for a while, well, it looks like it's easier to eliminate energy of the neutrino first because I'm looking at this gamma squared, all right. I'm gonna have to handle that somehow, so let's do this. I'm gonna um, solve one of these expressions for energy of the neutrino. Uh, let me solve the second equation for energy of the neutrino. So energy of the neutrino in terms of everything else, you know, move that over, multiply through by C is m mu c squared times the square root of gamma mu squared minus one. Okay, that's it. And I can plug that into here. Um, 
plug that into here to get uh, so from one and this I get uh, m i c is equal to gamma mu m mu c all right I gotta deal with the square roots okay um plus um m mu c m looking at here uh divide by c so squared goes away square rooted gamma mu squared minus one all right um okay there's no way around the tedious algebra so i'll go through it um and i, I think there's uh, some um usefulness in seeing the demonstration so i'll just do it <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I do, uh, because I've done this uh, a few times, I do see something will simplify as I go. So that'll be nice. Uh, so that's what gives me hope. <laughs> so And uh, the steps I'm going through are quite standard. When you have this kind of thing, you have a variable, you have the same variable inside the square root. The thing to do is, you know, first to solve everything in term, solve for the square root thing, so that you can just square the whole thing, get rid of the square root. So I'm going to do that first step first. I'm going to solve for the square root of the quantity. So square root of gamma mu squared minus. So by the way, I'm doing this algebra in my head. Um, if you need a little more time, you know, pause the video. For those of you watching it on recording, work it out yourself by hand and uh, make sure that I didn't make any mistakes. So um, move that over. Uh, M I C minus gamma mu m mu c um, divided by m mu c okay, I'm all good now I can square both sides square the whole thing um, then on the left hand side I end up with the gamma mu squared minus one on the right hand side now normally I would do this pair um, but let me write it out and you will see why I am not despairing. So uh, I'm actually going to simplify this a little bit. I'm going to distribute the division by m mu c so that the second term will just have gamma mu and the first term will have m mu, uh, just uh, the ratio of the masses, c's cancel out. So when I square this term, let me square this first minus gamma mu first. So when I do that, I get gamma mu squared. I hope you are seeing that this will cancel out. That's what gave me hope as I was looking at the expression earlier. Um, I need to square this. So I have plus m pi squared over m mu squared. And I need to handle the cross terms. The, those are the terms that come from this multiplying with that and the other way again. So it's going to end up being minus 2 uh, m pi over m mu times gamma mu. So yeah, uh, let's use the cancellation. Square the quantities cancel out. So um, if you are discouraged at seeing this and thinking, oh, I have to deal with the quadratic expression, it, it ends up being linear in this particular case. So, um, so you know, <laughs> just <laughs> preserve your through and it'll work out. So let me solve this for gamma mu. Um, so gamma mu is equal to i'm gonna so what i'm imagining is okay move this over here move the minus one over here so the end result of having done that is one plus m pi squared over m mu squared and i'm not done because this thing that i moved to the left hand side has two m pi over m mu so i need to divide the both sides by that so i need a m mu divide by 2m pi and guess it um, simplifies a little bit if you want to but I don't know it doesn't terribly simplify so I think I'm okay leaving it in this form because when you distribute this in okay you get one term here some of these things cancel out but uh, is it really simpler um, yeah I think I'm okay just leaving it in this form so that's gamma mu. And actually, once you have it in this form, then you can see that um, all the numbers you need to plug in has been given up here already. So let me just paste it in here. And then you can see that, oh, I have all those numbers. 
because all the numbers I need to plug in are the masses of the muon and the pion. I have the mass of the pion, I have the mass of the muon. So let me just uh, uh, plug those in. Um, so oh, let me do it this way. Uh, I'm going to declare my variables, mass of the uh, muon, mass of the pion. Um, those are all my variables. The expression I have is mass of the muon divided by 2 times mass of the pion. Um, that thing times 1 plus mass of the pion divided by mass of the muon squared. So this is an expression, and I can substitute in the values that they've given me. Um, it's the, the, I'm plugging in technically the rest to energy, but uh, um, Cs will cancel out anyway, so that's why I'm not bothering with the C. So mass of the pion is equal to 139.6 in mega electron volt units. And so the muon is uh, 105.7 in mega electron volt units. Um, yep, so gamma is equal to, uh, so that's uh, what gamma is. And I can use that to calculate everything else. So muon energy, uh, in terms of the expressions, what this is, is it's a gamma muon times mass of the muon times the C squared. So here I have gamma times the mass of the muon, uh, which was 105.7, and the Cs will work themselves out. So 109.82, uh, let's make sure that that's correct. 109.82, and the uh, rest uh, um, just, so I did that at just a checkpoint, and the rest will just uh, you know follow. The muon momentum, you still use this the same value of gamma and calculate uh, gamma mv, or I guess I can use this expression that I derived, uh, which should be uh, square root of uh, gamma squared minus 1 times mc. So uh, square root of gamma squared minus 1 times mass of the muon, 105.7, and c's will work themselves out. So the momentum of the muon would be um, here 29.78 uh, 29.78 in these units oh let me just plug it in uh, I guess I might know 29.78 and once you have this far then um, the, the, the rest is easy neutrino energy oh yeah that's wait, uh, uh, neutrino momentum magnet uh, magnitude will be the same it's going in the opposite direction, but the magnitude is the same. And if the neutrino is massless, its energy is actually uh, same numerical value as momentum in, uh, in the unit system where C is equal to 1. So, so yeah, that's the easier version. For part to be, um, so this is the challenge. Um, where, so in part A, the... Simplification really came from the um, from being able to address basically the energy and momentum of the muon with a single parameter. It was basically the one and the same thing. So um, with the part to B, where we are saying, well, maybe muon is not uh, sorry, neutrino is not massless. Uh, so it might have uh, different, um, might not be moving at C, then um, basically the expression for neutrino gets as complicated as the expression for muon. So let me do this one using SageMath because um, I think uh, um, doing this question, uh, I think I can do the entire thing in SageMath. Uh, that might be actually better. So... Uh, let me first write out the symbols that I'll need. Um, I, I think I can declare it more than once. So I have mass of the pion, and I'm going to work in units of c equal to 1. So I'll basically be ignoring all the c's. Um, so instead of uh, expressing muon in terms of its gamma factor, let me um, express muon in terms of its... Uh, uh, Let's see, can I do it in terms of its energies? 
think I can. Uh, energy of the muon. Um, and I'm sure I'm, at some point I am going to need the rest energy of the muon. So I'll have that. And uh, so in the second component here, instead of writing out the momentum in that form, I'll just say momentum of the muon. And uh, for neutrino, I have the energy of the neutrino, and I have a mass of the neutrino, which we are no longer assuming is zero. And I have momentum of the neutrino to worry about. Okay, that's all. So let me start writing down equations. Equation one, that would be conservation of energy. Uh, mass of the pi ion is equal to times C, uh, is equal to the, the energy of the muon plus energy of the neutrino. That's one. Uh, equation two, um, that would be my the the momentum conservation equation. Zero is equal to uh, momentum of the uh, muon minus momentum of the neutrino, or going in the opposite direction. Now, as you look at these two equations, you have two equations. Uh, that's known. One, two, three, four unknowns. That means you need two more equations to be able to solve this uh, system of equations. And those two more equations, I, I can get them from this energy momentum relationship. So let me write that out. Equation three, well, that's the energy momentum relationship for muon. Energy of the muon squared is equal to its uh, rest energy times, uh, wait, I'm skipping C. C is equal to one in the <laughs> way I'm working. Rest energy squared plus the momentum of the muon squared. It's my equation three. My equation four will be energy of the neutrino squared is equal to mass of the neutrino squared uh, plus the momentum of the neutrino squared. So I have this a system of equations, equation one, two, three, and four. With these four, I have four equations, four unknowns, solvable. So let's uh, make sage math to solve it. So uh, solve. Um, so, well, um, let me just copy and paste. This is my system of equations. And I want you to solve for, um, I guess, really the two quantities that I'm, well, you know what, I get there actually all of them. Energy, momentum, energy, momentum. Yeah, let me specify them in that order. So the muon energy, uh, muon momentum, neutrino energy, and neutrino momentum. Now, I fully expect uh, SageMath to complain. Um, computer algebra systems tend to do these calculations in a super general way, like all the symbols I declared, it's going to assume that it could be complex. And that sometimes causes issues. Now, if it is causing an issue, it'll complain. Oh, wow, it didn't complain. Okay, so that's my answer. Um, if you look at it carefully, it's a nested array. The outside array should, I don't know, it, it, it's a considering possibility of more than one set of solutions. Here there's only one set, so uh, I can just uh, go in one level. So my solution is the previous output, just the first element. So this is the array of solutions for energy of the muon, momentum of the muon. And, uh, okay. Uh, let me just plug in the numbers. Uh, so energy of the muon will be substituted in the the mass of the muon, uh, which was, uh, oh, wait, I have them here, mass of the muon, 105.65839, and I need the mass of the pi ion, uh, 139.56755, and I need uh, the mass of the neutrino, mass of the neutrino, 0 0.190. Yeah, that should be, should be the answer. Let me just do the rest and then, uh, I'll just plug in all the numbers all together. Oh, it made my moment of the muon um, negative. It, oh, you know what? I think previous, there was actually two different solutions. Yeah, two or four. Let's see, uh, from here to here. Yeah, that's one set of solutions. And yeah, because uh, it's uh, two possibilities, you know. Muon could be going in positive or negative directions. So the solution I grabbed is the version where muon was going in negative direction. Or, um, not quite sure why they are both negative. Well, 
Were there four possible solutions? Um, let me just do this. Yes. And I just want to know its length. I mean, okay, there's only two. Oh, I guess, I don't know. I think if I grab the second one, eh, let me do it this way. Um, I'm going to grab the second element and let me just redo the calculations. They're, they're not both going to be positive, are they? I don't know. I, I, too, I think, oh, you know what? I think it's an issue with how I wrote the equation. Yeah. I wrote this equation so that both of these variables will be positive quantities because I put my uh, sign direction into the sign in the equation. So that's actually right. Um, so, and this is the physical solution that I want you to get where all my variables are positive quantities. So, so yeah, let me just uh, plug this in. I think that's uh, it and we are way over time. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I said it will be way over time because this is a, uh, the kind of question, uh, 109 point. How many significant figures I need? Correctly to 10,000th place. So that's uh, five decimal places. 77752, or 29.789, or two. Um, 29.7900, zero, zero, three. 29.789, or two, uh, wait, 29.7894 two. Yeah, and I think the, I don't know why it's a 10,000th place. I think you could get, um, yeah, you, you could have done with less. Um, because in terms of distinguishing between this solution and that, that's already done at the, uh, at hundredth uh, precision here, yeah, at the hundredth precision, it's already done. And the same to build here, I think, at the hundredth or yeah, at the hundredth precision, it's already done. Yeah. But yeah, this is a uh, um, and the mesodamion, it's still on uh, mesodamion neutrino, it's a still an unsettled question. Uh, uh, there's something called a neutrino oscillation that. Um, demonstrates that different flavors of neutrinos have different mass. So some of them must have some mass, but um, as to the, so there are ex experiments that measure the mass difference between the neutrinos, but um, neutrino flavors, but uh, we don't yet have any experiment that uh, measures the actual value of the neutrino mass. We know them as uh, the, and that's more of a particle physics, some of which we might not be able to get to this semester with our shortened semester, but uh, we'll see.